All right, folks, how are you doing today? It's Clay Francisco doing another tutorial here for you. Uh, this one is going to be on Inkscape, but really it's just about how I do my um, logo, or how I did my logo for my book, A Tale of Cards. Um, yeah, so uh, first you're going to want to go to Inkscape here, inkscape.org, and uh, this is the downloads page, right? Go ahead and download your version for Windows or Mac or whatever you're doing. I've got a uh, 9.2, not the 9.23 revision version, so you know, whatever works, but that's what we'll be using today. And just to let you know, this is how I work. It's a little crazy, I know, I'm sorry, but this is what my process looks like. So it's a little bit nuts, and I'm going to go ahead and close this. And no, we are not going to save any of that because goodness knows what I've done. Well, I was getting ready for the, oh, no, yeah, just yes, close that saving. There we are, okay. And here we go. So, this is the shortened version of what I do. All right, sorry about that chaos. Here we are. This was the mock-up given to me by uh, the guy who designed my um, cover, Ryan Behrens. And this is my finished version. Notice how I didn't touch his art at all, of course. I just got the uh, the logo text going a little bit, you know, and this, my name, and the sizing correct, apparently, because this was my first version, and I didn't know what size to tell him to do it. I just told him to make something, and he did, which was awesome. And I had to go ahead and put some borders on it to make sure that it... Um, yeah, fit the normal uh, ebook size. Anyway, you can see here the text has a little bit of a. This is a flame background actually that I threw into it on GIMP. Um, I can show you how to do that in another tutorial. Um, but what I ended up uh, settling on, you know, for that first initial version was this. Whoop! Right, it's just a nice, good, clean version. Um, and uh, you know when it's in black this is what it looks like and so what I what I ended up doing is making a custom line break which is this thing here and this is for my well yeah my line breaks right and so this is a custom little line break there whoops took them off his background anyway um, and uh, the logo or the uh, book text and um, they're all gonna be you know a tale of karg and then have some other you know I think a, a the hand in the shadows is what I'm working on right now. Um, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you, you know, the iterations that I went through to try to get this done. Um, as you can see here, he started with the little squiggle snake on top, just, you know, a sketch that he threw in there. And um, as you can see down here, this initial version I did really closely mirrored what he had. Right. And that's where I started. Right, I started by trying to make, you know, something simple, right, that would look very much like this, and something very much like this, and it fits, you know, he's he's right, I mean, that's what he designed it for, is he designed it to fit in this triangle, right, and so I went with that, with my shape, um, but definitely, you know, it, it took a few iterations, and so what I ended up doing was working my way down, I tried a knife, the G. That didn't work very well. Went back to the spear, did some gross stuff, right? And this ends up looking far too uh, <laughs> Stargate, right? And then I found this, and this was the one, you know, that I was like, okay, here we've got something good going on here, right? It's plain, it's boring, it's got the uh, tail of Karg, the Viper and the King set is perfect here, so it made me realize I didn't want to mess with this and going on here, right? This ampersand and the the G coming down like that hook. Um, there's a there's a thing called a shack knife in my book, and I kind of wanted to represent that. Spears are not necessarily uh, thematically really what goes on in the book very much, but it's kind of on the cover a lot and. Uh, it just works, right? I like the way it, the angle is here and the angle is here. Um, it really, yeah, it just all these lines kind of all seem to really work together. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, 
I, um, it took me a while to get there, right? I did, you know, step away for a minute and try some other stuff and go for a more, you know, cartoony style here. Um, but, you know, I definitely, as you can tell, you know, sort of preferred that shape. I knew where I kind of wanted it to nest all along, right? You know, you can see this one where I tried the ampersand in the G just to, to see what that might look like, you know? And that's when I realized this is the shape of it. This is what I want. Um, but I had to, you know, work on it. And, and the spear itself actually took several iterations. Um, I don't have them here on this one. I had them on the other version. But um, there's a fat spear. There's a spear with two, uh, you know, symmetrical points. This one has just a harpoon that comes off the edge there, right at the bottom of the A to give the A that nice, you know, sharp look. Um, yeah, and then so that that's how I did that. Um, I can actually go through and show you just really quickly how one converts text so that you can just here I'll show you. Go ahead and write something out. My awesome book title. Alright? Yeah, we don't put that there. Anyway. Can I highlight this? Choose a base font just to get us started. Oh, let's make this a lot bigger. All right, here we go. Start with a base font. Something fun. Eh, that's not very fun. Yeah, that's a little too hard to read. <sighs> yeah. All right. We'll just do something boring because it doesn't really matter. Anyway, start with this. Regular select it. Go to your path. And it is object to path. We'll find out, because if it is object to path, what we'll be able to do is use Control Shift G, yes, and ungroup it. Now our letters are free form. Uh, check it out. Now, granted, they're not part of the typeset anymore, right? They're now objects. That's if you can see, like the uh, um, if I were to start here and type all over again, right? Yoink. See, see the uh, the typeset stuff I have come up, right? How I can change the spreading, whatever the heck that spacing is called, and and uh, I don't know what that does, but you know I can do that, and I can change that setting there, whatever that does. So anyway, all of these things you would want to do to your text beforehand, right? Get it looking all jumbled and however you need it. And then you break it apart by going to path, object to path, and then ungrouping it. And that, you know, you could do over in uh, object, I believe. Yep, group and ungroup, right? So control shift G like I was using there. And then now it's in its own little pieces and you can do whatever you need to. The fun part and the really interesting thing is that, you know, like this A, right? Like I did with the A here. If you were to take a triangle, let's say, so it's a, one of these things with three sides, three corners. I'm holding down control, by the way, to make it snap to and be perfectly straight up. So control and then drag, click and drag. We're going to stick this in here, but we're going to make it kind of light first. Oh, got snaps on. Oops. That's going to be annoying. Whoa, where did it go? There it is. But anyway, what you would do is you would take the time to line this up. Stick this in here, right? And cut this puppy out. 
But I am going to do neither of those things. I'm just going to do a rough cut here. Get out of there. Stop it. Ooh. You do what I say. All right. I'll take these two guys. And then I'm going to use this where I go to path. And as you can see, I can union them together, which is literally what the shape says. Squish! See those lines disappear? They are now one shape. Ta-da! One shape. Can't even ungroup them. Control Shift G, go to object, try to ungroup it. There's nothing to ungroup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now grab both of these objects and do another one of these past things. I'm going to do a difference. And that's going to cut out that A shape, right? And so now I can do it again. Make myself another one of these puppies. This time, I'm going to spin it some, line it up with this angle. And of course, you know, all of this would actually be done. You could do this by the numbers, right? And actually right click and choose how to rotate this. Um, I can't remember exactly where all of that is done, but um, you can actually choose to do this in degrees and really really dial in what you want to do. Um, it, it's great for that. You can dial in all your perfect sizes, everything down to the pixels. But there, there's tons of tutorials on how to do Inkscape, right? You don't need to learn that from me. But I just wanted to show you that cha, it goes away, right? That is how, in a really rough sense, you can make your super awesome logos. If you got a little bit of design skills, you know, if you got kind of a little bit of a you know, an eye for that thing. I, I happen to love all of this jazz and playing with this software and, and you know, so etc. etc. right? And because I got my snaps on. Err, my snap grid. Erg. Anyway, I didn't realize I had that before the tutorial, but, um, you know, that's it, right? Go ahead. Get yourself Inkscape. See what you can do. Um, a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I get my fonts over at Font Squirrel, um, so I highly recommend checking them out. Um, you know, some of them, I, I think, I don't know if Font Squirrel costs money with some of them, but you can find tons of fonts out there for paid, for free. Google even has fonts on it. So, you know, if you're in a Google Doc and you're doing your thing and you write there, you can find amazing fonts in there as well. Um, yeah, but that's it. This is Clay Francisco. Thank you for watching this tutorial on Inkscape and logo design, or at least, you know, how to just hack something together real quick um yeah if you like this video please you know give it a thumbs up subscribe do all that stuff and uh i'll see you next time thank you very much bye